This presentation introduces the world of redox reactions. By the end of the presentation, you ought to be able to say what's meant by a redox reaction and define oxidation and reduction in terms of loss or gain of electrons. If you're given the balanced equation for a fairly simple redox reaction involving elements and ions, you ought to be able to pick out what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. You ought to be able to write half equations to show this. And you also need to be able to say what's acting as the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent in the reaction. So what is a redox reaction? Well, a redox reaction involves two processes occurring at the same time, reduction and oxidation. That's all very well. Well, what do these words mean? You need to know a very specific technical definition for each of these words. We'll start with reduction. It means gain of electrons. So in a redox reaction, one thing will be gaining electrons. Oxidation, on the other hand, means loss of electrons. So in a redox reaction, something else will be losing electrons. And we need both of these processes to make a reaction, because you can't have something gaining electrons unless something else is losing them. And you can't have something losing electrons unless something else is gaining them. Electrons can't just appear from nowhere, and they can't just disappear to nowhere they're going to be transferred from one thing to the other. So these processes happen in partnership in a reaction. An important point to make is that not all reactions are redox. So redox reactions are a specific set of reactions. There's plenty of other types of reactions. Precipitation, you might have considered recently, does not involve a redox process. You might be cursing at this point, saying, oh, another thing to remember. Uh, well, here's something to help you, potentially. The first letters of the words oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, spells out oil rig. So if you can picture an oil rig, and there's a lovely picture here for you to look at, then maybe uh, that'll help you remember. Of course, if you've never heard of an oil rig, uh, it's not really going to be much use to you. And you do need to remember that what we're talking about is electrons. So oxidation is loss, reduction is gain of electrons. Let's actually look at a specific redox reaction and see this in action then. I'll take the example of sodium reacting with chlorine to make the substance sodium chloride. If we go through the substances one by one and think of them in terms of electrons, we've got sodium, and that's just the element, no charge. We've got chlorine, the element, no charge. So they're not ions, uh, they're the unreacted elements. On the right-hand side with the products, the sodium chloride, though, uh, we now have a compound. And so the sodium will have reacted to form Na plus ions, and the chlorine will have reacted to make Cl minus ions. So what does this mean in terms of reduction and oxidation? Let's think about the two reactants. The sodium, when it reacts, it's lost its outer shell electron to go to the Na plus ion. We said loss of electrons was oxidation. So therefore, in this reaction, it is a redox reaction, and sodium is being oxidized. Oxidation has happened to the sodium. What about the chlorine? Well, chlorine, group 7, non-metal, gains an electron for each atom to fill the outer shell. And so the chlorine atoms in Cl2 have gained electrons to make Cl- ions. Gain of electrons is reduction, so we can say that for the chlorine, reduction has taken place, or the chlorine has been reduced. Note that we need both processes. So if you ever are trying to think about a redox reaction and you come up that both things have been oxidized or both things have been reduced and the other process hasn't happened, you've definitely done something wrong. You're going to have one of each in a full redox reaction. Here's another example for us to consider. The reaction between potassium bromide and chlorine to make potassium chloride and bromine. We're going to apply the same principles here, but there's the added little twist that there is also something in the reaction that is not changing at all. So in a way, in a redox reaction, our choices are something being oxidized, something being reduced, and possibly, in addition, one or more things being unchanged. Let's have a look at the substances involved. So if we start with the potassium bromide, this is a compound. The potassium will be as a K-plus ion. The bromide Br- minus ion in that compound, but the chlorine, the element, no charge, the unreacted element. Over on the right, the potassium chloride, again we've got an ionic compound, potassium is always at plus one ion, K+, plus. Uh, chloride ions are Cl-, and then we've got the element, 
bromine, so this is not an ion, no charge, the neutral atoms in a molecule. Right, let's have a look through, see what has happened to each thing then. So, starting with the K plus ion, on the left we've got K plus ion, on the right we've got K plus ion, no change. So this is a spectator, it's not part of our redox reaction in reality. The bromide ion, on the other hand, if we look at that, it goes from the Br- on the left to the Br2 on the right. So we're going from the negative ion to the uh, neutral uh, molecule. So we're losing electrons here. And that's, by definition, oxidation. So the bromide ions in potassium bromide have been oxidized. The chlorine on the left goes to chloride ions on the right, and that's a gain of electrons they're getting an electron into the outer shell to make the Cl- ion. We said gain of electrons is reduction, so the chlorine has been reduced. Just note here the way we talk about this. We don't say that the potassium bromide has been oxidized or reduced. It's the bromide ions in the potassium bromide that have been oxidized. So we get quite specific when we're describing what's oxidized and what's reduced in a redox reaction. So I'm sure you're dying to have a go yourself. Here's a couple of redox reactions. For each one, decide what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. So some answers. For the first one, we've got the following. The lithium metal goes to Li plus ions in the compound. That's a loss of electrons. It's been oxidized. The oxygen element has gone to the oxide O2 minus ions in the compound. That's a gain of electrons. It's been reduced. For the second one, we have the spectator ion, the sulfate ion, SO4-2-. Remember, you do need to memorize these ions, and you'll find this sort of thing hard unless you do so. Uh, that doesn't change from left to right, so that's a spectator ion in this reaction. And then we've got the zinc metal going into the zinc sulfate as a Zn2 plus ion, loss of electrons, oxidized. And we've got the uh, Cu2 plus ion in copper sulfate going to just the copper metal as the product. So that's a gain of electrons, and that's reduction. We'll move on now to the skill of white writing what are called ionic half equations. And these are equations that show separately the electrons being lost and electrons being gained in a redox reaction. Let's use an example to explore that in detail. And we'll take an example that we just looked at already. So lithium reacting with oxygen to make lithium oxide. When we analysed this reaction, we said that the lithium went from the atom, Li, to a lithium 1 plus ion, and that was loss of electrons oxidation, and that the oxygen went from oxygen atom in the O2 molecule to an oxide ion, O2 minus, and that's a gain of electrons. So we need to write little equations to show this process, showing the gain or loss of electrons. We'll start with the lithium. So we're going from Li to Li plus. Now, if you're doing that, to go from the atom to a 1 plus ion, you must lose one electron. And so somehow we're going to have to change what we've written here to show the loss of an electron. And the way we do that is to put plus 1, except we don't write the 1, uh, electron on the right-hand side. Uh, now, what we don't do is subtract. So you might think, well, I'm losing an electron, I'll subtract one. But of course, in chemistry, we're just moving real objects around. So we don't subtract the electron from the lithium, we just represent the fact that it's now separated out. So we started with a lithium atom with the electron in it, we've gone to a lithium 1 plus ion, and the electron that's now separated out. For the oxygen, we're going from the oxygen atom in the O2 molecule to an oxide ion O2 minus. To go from the neutral atom to the O2 minus ion, have to gain two electrons. So we need to show gain of electrons in our equation, and that's perhaps simpler to understand. We just write plus two electrons on the left-hand side with the reactant. So in general, whenever you've got oxidation occurring, you'll see electrons written on the right-hand side of the balanced equation, and for reduction, you'll see it written on the, the electrons written on the left-hand side. We'll consider one more example, and, and just to make life a bit more exciting, we'll take one that has a spectator ion in and show that these don't actually appear in our half equations. So this is potassium iodide, Ki, reacting with bromine, Br2, to make potassium bromide, KBr, and iodine. And if we do the kind of analysis we did before, thinking about charges and so on, we get this. 
If we now work through that substance by substance, we've got the K plus ions, same on the left and the right, no change. Move on. What about the I minus ions, the iodide ions that were in the potassium iodide? Well, those go from I minus into the I2. And if we keep the balancing that we've got here, the two iodide ions will make the one I2 molecule. What about the electrons then? So we're going from negative ion back to neutral atoms. That must be losing electrons. Each iodide ion loses one electron, but we've got two iodide ions, so therefore we lose two electrons. Do you remember where we write loss of electrons? It's on the right as a plus. So plus two electrons on the right to show that we've lost two electrons in total from our two iodide ions. That's obviously oxidation, loss of electrons. Moving on again, we've got the bromine, the other reactant, uh, and now that's going to bromide ions in potassium bromide. So our Br2 makes two bromide ions, two Br-. Uh, and now thinking about electrons again, we're going from neutral atoms this time to the one minus ions. So each atom, each bromine atom must gain one electron to fill its outer shell. Of course, since we've got two bromine atoms, that's two electrons gained. Uh, we need to show this in our half equation. How do we show that? They're added on the left-hand side, so Br2 plus two electrons, and that's reduction, that's gain of electrons. Just know that I was very specific in my language there. I didn't say that iodine had been oxidized. I said iodide ions in the potassium iodide had been oxidized, and I said bromine for the Br2. So you use the correct chemical name for the reactant uh, in each case when you're talking about what's oxidized and what's reduced. A quick recap here of some of the key skills involved in these, I in these ionic half equations then. Uh, for the oxidation half equation, remember, you'll always get plus a certain amount of electrons on the right-hand side of the balanced equation. And for the reduction, you'll always get plus a certain amount of electrons on the left-hand side of the balanced equation. Uh, when you're splitting up a redox reaction into two half equations, one of them must be an oxidation reaction, uh, oxidation half equation, the other one must be a reduction half equation. You must have one of each, or you've gone wrong. So in other words, one of the half equations must have electrons on the right, the other one must have electrons on the left, or there is an error somewhere. Don't forget you ignore any spectator ions, so if you're given the whole balanced equation for the redox reaction, take a check, see if there's anything that is completely unchanged by the reaction in terms of its charge. Uh, and note we didn't put any state symbols into our half equations. They, they're there in a normal chemical equation, but in an ionic half equation, we don't tend to bother with them. So here's a chance for you to have a go at this yourself. Here is a full balanced equation for a redox reaction. Have a go at splitting it into the oxidation and reduction half equations and deciding for each one, does it show oxidation or does it show reduction? And you should have come up with the following. You should have left out the calcium Ca2 plus ion, it's a spectator, and then taken the fluorine and shown F2 plus two electrons to make two fluoride ions, said that was reduction gain of electrons. And the chloride ions, the two Cl minus ions, go to Cl2 with the loss of two electrons, so plus two electrons on the right hand side, that's oxidation therefore, because it's loss of electrons. Uh, you might be wondering if you could have simplified these half equations as a half F2 plus one electron makes one fluoride ion and one chloride ion makes half a Cl2 plus one electron. That would actually be equally correct. Our final skill that we'll look at in this presentation is deciding what is the oxidizing agent and what is the reducing agent in a redox reaction. So far we've just said what is oxidized and what is reduced and there's a difference here. So be very careful to pay attention to exactly how this works. For the reducing agent, the reducing agent is the thing that is itself oxidized. Now if it's oxidized it means it gives away electrons and it gives them to something so it makes something else gain electrons so it causes reduction. That should be logical if you think about it. The thing that is itself oxidized causes something else to be reduced because it gives them electrons. And so we call it the reducing agent. It's the agent of change. It's the, the thing that makes reduction happen. Uh, similarly, for the oxidizing agent, 
Whatever is itself reduced gains electrons. That means it takes electrons away from something, makes something else lose electrons, and so it therefore causes something else to be oxidized, and we call it the oxidizing agent. Let's look at an example equation, the reaction between chlorine and bromide ions. And we've got the chlorine going to chloride ions, the bromide ions turning into bromine. So the chlorine gains electrons to make chloride ions. That means it is itself reduced, it's gained electrons, and that makes it the oxidizing agent. The bromide ions, on the other hand, lose electrons to make bromine. That means they are themselves oxidized, and that makes them the reducing agent. So in a way, it's the opposite. Whatever is oxidized is the reducing agent. Whatever is reduced is the oxidizing agent. So as a final moment of fun in this presentation, here's an equation for you to look at. What is the oxidizing agent? What is the reducing agent in this reaction? The reducing agent must be the thing that's being oxidized, right? We said that, the thing that's losing electrons. And in that case, it's the iodide ions in the iron to iodide there. Note we don't say iodine. It's not the element iodine, it's iodide ions in a compound. And the oxidizing agent, that must be the thing that is itself being reduced, gaining electrons, and that's the bromine going to bromide ions.